Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back. Today, I am going to be showing you guys how I kind of change the shape of my eyes with eyeshadow. I don't use any winged liner with this because I'm terrible at winged liner. This tutorial is mainly just going to focus on eyeshadows and how you can use them to lift and elongate your eyes. As you guys can see, I have pretty downturned eyes and eyes that are pretty close to each other and there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with the way that my eyes look. If you have the same eyes as me, there's nothing wrong with the way that they look. I just like to change the way they appear with eyeshadow. I've been doing it for a while and I just love the way that it looks. And I just wanted to share with you guys the technique that I have started to use to lift and elongate my eyes. So if you are someone who struggles with the same thing as I do, or if you are someone who just wants to learn how you can manipulate eyeshadows to change the shape of your eye. Let's go ahead and get into it. I don't know if you guys can see, I just want to warn you that I'm having a bit of an allergic reaction on my face. I'm towards the end of it, but I really wanted to film this video today. This is what happens when I go in the sun. I get like a major rash and I was out in the sun for like 0.2 seconds and of course it came out. <laughs> so before we even get into the actual tutorial, I want to give you guys a little bit of background information before you start on your eyes. Now this is just my technique and this is what I have found is the best way for me to lift my eyes and I want you guys to take whatever resonates with you and use it in your own routine. You don't have to follow this exactly. You can pick and choose what bits of information work for you. But I want to show you guys how I kind of map out my eyes before I even dive in and do the actual tutorial. So before you even get started, you want to make sure that you choose an eyeshadow palette that you know is going to blend really well. Some of my favorites are the Blend Bunny Surge palette, which I'm going to use today, the Be Perfect Stacey Marie Carnival palette, the Wet n Wild Color Icon, I believe is what it's called. I know the NYX Ultimate Utopia palette is another great one. This is just the one that I always go back to because these shadows blend so seamlessly. They pretty much do all the work for me. So that's the first step before we even even get started is make sure you're picking a palette that you've used before that's not going to give you patchiness that you know is going to perform well. So once you have your palette in hand, you're going to go ahead and look at all the shades that are in the palette. There's a lot in here. It's a little bit overwhelming. As you guys can see from here up, each column has a color story. So what that means is each column has three different shades that you can use that are going to complement each other. This is a palette that really lays it out well for you. That's not to say that you can't mix and match each shade, whichever one you want. You can definitely do that. But the great thing about this palette is it gives you a nice laid out color story. If you are very new at this and you don't really know which ones to choose, you can go ahead and just go based on what the column is giving you. You, which leads into how I pick my shadows when I want to lift my eyes and kind of elongate my eyes. You're going to want to pick three different shadows, one really dark, one that's going to be your transition middle lid shade, and then one that's going to be the inner corner, which is going to be the lightest shade. So a dark medium light basically. As you guys can see, this palette lays out exactly that for you. You know, you have your dark, your medium, and then your light. So we're going to follow what's on this palette. The whole point of this part of the video is just to tell you guys that it is a good idea to plan out your color stories for your eye looks before you go in and actually do them. But what really, what I really want you to take away from this is that you're going to go from light to medium to dark, and that's what's really going to help lift and elongate your eyes. And it's very easy to get discouraged when it comes to eyeshadow if you pick the wrong shades. And and by wrong shades, I mean shades that are going to clash and mute each other and give you a very muddy eye look. So I want to make sure that you're set up for success before you even start so that you won't get into the middle of your eye look and think, what the heck am I doing? I don't know how to do this. I'm not good at it. When in reality, it was most likely just the colors you picked and not your actual skills. It does not take a pro to do this, but it's very easy to get discouraged. So for the look today that I'm going to do, I'm going to use this column right here, which is just a bunch of oranges and browns and creams. Now I have already primed my eyes. I do think that primer is important just so that you can get the most out of your shadows and get the most pigment out of them, but if you find that you feel better without your eyes primed, go ahead and do that. You can use concealer if you want, or you can use an actual eyeshadow primer. I always use the MAC Painterly Paint Pot. That's my favorite one. It works the best for me. I have very oily eyelids. I have very oily skin. That one has worked for me for years. Definitely recommend it if you're on the hunt for a new one. I am, of course, going to go in with this Morphe M506, and I'm 
gonna take this grunge shade right here, which is a very chocolatey warm brown. At this point, I'm not gonna worry about how much of a mess I'm gonna make all over my face because I am gonna be able to clean everything up afterwards. That's part of the reason why I do my eyes first is so that I can have enough freedom and not worry that I'm gonna mess everything else up. So I'm gonna be a little bit messy with these shades. If you want to, you can take a piece of tape. I know a lot of people do this. You can take a piece of tape and line it up with the lower lash line and bring it out to give yourself a nice crisp line. I like to go in with makeup remover. It's all the same to me. You guys can do whatever feels the most comfortable to you. Now, I'm gonna take this grunge shade and keeping my eye open, I'm gonna place it in the outermost corner of my eye. Because I have a little bit of like a hood to my eye, as you guys can see, I have like a line right here. Because of that, I'm gonna keep my eyes open as I'm mapping out the shadows so that I know what the eyeshadow is gonna look like when my eyes are open. Because <laughs> if I do it with my eyes closed, it's, it's just gonna end up being messy. And I'm gonna drag this along the lash line and bring it in. Now you don't want to drag it in in the crease up here. You really wanna avoid doing that. You wanna mostly just bring it in on the lid and lash line. And I'm packing at first to shadow on and then I'm going in and kind of flicking it and blending it in. We're not gonna bring it more than a third in because we wanna leave space for the rest of the shadows. Now I like to bring mine out pretty far. You don't have to go out this far. This is just what I like to do. And that is what we're left with. This is just the first step. We're gonna go in and play with it and fix it. We just wanna lay down the shadows and then go in and start the blending. So the next brush that I'm gonna use is this Morphe M433. This is a great blending brush, complete dupe for the Sigma E25, which is a great, great blending brush. And the next shade I'm going to go in with is this juicy shade right here. It's a nice warm orangey shade and I'm going to pack it on this brush, tap off the excess, and I'm going to start in that grunge shade and blend inwards. And again, keeping my eye open, I'm taking it above the crease and blending it into that first shade that we used. I'm going like two thirds of the way in, leaving room for the third shade that we're gonna use. So at this stage, I feel like I wanna go in and add more grunge. So I'm gonna take my first brush that I used with a little more grunge and I'm gonna pack it on and I'm gonna blend. And I'm using a very light hand when it comes to blending. My hand is pretty far back on the brush so that I'm not using a lot of pressure. And because my eyes, like I said, have a little bit of a hood, I'm bringing it above the crease so that when I open my eye, you can still see the eyeshadow and the blend. I'm gonna go back in with my 433 and my Juicy shade, bringing it all the way almost in my eyebrows. I'm gonna go ahead and take this over that grunge shade back here to kind of diffuse it. This whole eye look is basically just going back and forth with your shadows and really blending them into each other. So now that we are at this point and we have this much space left in our eye look, we're gonna go in with our lightest shade. I'm going to take this cut it out shade, which is a very light kind of orangey peachy shade. And I'm gonna take it on this Morphe M421 and I'm gonna pack it on the brush and in here, I'm going to pat it on. I'm bringing it pretty far into that juicy shade. And that is because we're gonna marry them and blend them together. So as you can see, I brought it really far in. I'm gonna go ahead with my four Morphe M433, go back over, pat it on, and blend. Now this is just personal preference, but I like to bring the slightest shade pretty high up and over. I feel like this helps to make my eyes appear a little bit further apart. Once I'm at this point and I have all of my shadows laid down, I like to take a clean fluffy brush. You can use whichever one you have on hand or you can even take this one and wipe all the excess off. But I just have a clean one right here and I'll go from the outside in and just take it and blend everything out. And this is really gonna help to marry everything. If you feel like some parts are a little bit patchy, you can go in and add some more. I feel like I wanna add more out here. So I'm gonna take the same brush that I used for the first shade and add some more of that grunge color, keeping my eye open. And that is the eye that we are left with. The biggest part of this eye look is the blending, and that is what's gonna take up most of your time when it comes to this eye look, is just really making sure that all the shadows melt into each other by going in and adding more of one shade, going in, adding more of another shade, blending it out, going in, adding more. And really all it takes is three eyeshadows. I decided to use all 
all mattes for this eye look, but you could have definitely gone in with a light shimmer color on the inner corner. I think I have another video where I did that. I think I did like a cut crease, so I'll have it linked up here. I just prefer mattes. I love a nice matte smoky eye look. When it comes to shimmers, you really are only going to want to use those on the lid of your eye, but you guys, like I said, makeup is personal. You can do whatever way you want. I just know that when you start to use a dark shimmer shadow on the outer corner things can get a little bit muddy so I really only recommend using shimmer shades on the lid so like the medium color and the light color so I went ahead and I did my other eye off camera but I want to talk about the most important technique when it comes to this eye look and that is when you're placing your eyeshadows down you want to make sure to start inside the other shade that's already down so let me break that down for you a little bit more after I put this shadow down when I went to put the middle one down I started inside this eyeshadow. What that is going to do is decrease the amount of time you're going to have to spend blending and it's going to provide a nice gradient into the second color that you put down. Another important thing for this eye look is to take a clean blending brush like I did before and really run it through the eyeshadow look. Because it is a clean brush it's not going to have any residual shadow on it so it's really going to help blend everything out. I like to push mine pretty much all the way up into my brows because I don't have a lot of lid space. And the last important thing that's really going to amplify this eye look is the inner corner. You want to make sure that it is nice and bright. I like to really pack on the eyeshadow and really pull it in. This is really going to help lift your eyes and elongate them. So now that we are at this point, everything looks pretty messy. The next most important thing that you're going to do is clean up the outer edges of this eye look. The way that I do it is with a makeup wipe, but you guys can do whatever you want. Like I said in the beginning, if you wanted to use tape, this would be the time that you take that tape off very carefully. Carefully. You can take a cotton swab if you want and some micellar water. I like to take a makeup wipe because it works the best for me. I feel like I have the most control. And what I'm going to do is, following the lower lash line, I'm going to follow that same curve and go upward. And I'm not pressing too hard, but I am pressing hard enough to create a nice sharp line. You see the difference between this eye and this eye? how it really helps to lift everything. That's why, don't worry about being messy when you first lay these shadows down because this really is where it all comes together. So this is the final product of the eye look. The gradient of the shadows going from lightest to darkest is really what helps to lift and elongate the eyes. Now I'm gonna go ahead and finish the rest of my makeup off camera and then I'll come back and we can finish up this makeup look together. So I will see you guys in just a second. Okay, you guys, so I did pop some lashes on, some mascara, and then a thin line of liquid liner. The lashes that I used are the Firecracker Lashes by Molten Lashes. These are really great. They're a little bit of a cat eye, which also helps to lift my eyes. Lashes are also important when it comes to changing the shape of your eye because if you are someone who wants to lift your eyes, you want to make sure that your lashes kind of follow the same shape as your eyeshadow. So I always go for more of a cat eye, which means that it's a little bit more fuller on the outer edge. So let's go ahead and finish off this eye look. We're going to go ahead and do the lower lash line. For the lower lash line I'm going to follow the same kind of technique that I did for the lid. I'm going to go in with my darkest shade which is that grunge shade, the dark brown shade, and I'm going to take it right up to the lower lash line and I'm only going to go halfway in. I'm going to also connect this to the outer corner of the top of our eyeshadow. Then I'm going to take that same brush, this Morphe M433 that I used with the juicy color which is that orange shade and I'm going to blend it out. Again, focusing on the outer corner. I'm not going to line my waterline today just because I want to give my eye a little bit more of an open eye effect and when I add the liner it kind of closes my eye a little bit so I'm not going to include the liner. You can if you want to. Adding liner is a really gorgeous way to make the eye look nice and smoky. I am going to take some mascara though and just run it along the lower lashes. This is just the Lash Princess by Essence. In connecting the lower lash line to the top outer corner it also really helps to lift the eye. It really adds a nice elongated look to the eye look, so that's another helpful tip. I'm going to go ahead and do my lips really quick. I'm going to be using the MAC Strip Down Liner and the MUA Makeup Academy Matte Lipstick in Bonafide. I did go ahead and add some of this NYX Butter Gloss in the shade Creme Brulee, just to give it a little something something on my lips. The final step, of course, for all of my tutorials is just bringing back my birthmark, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. And we are all set and ready to 
to go. I hope this tutorial helped you guys out just a little bit, helped you understand how you can change the shape of your eyes with just a little bit of eyeshadow. I hope there is something from this video that resonates with you. If you have not already, make sure that you are subscribed and that you hit the little bell so that you are always notified when I put out a new video. And I believe that is it for today's video, you guys. I hope that you all enjoyed. I hope that I helped shed a little bit of light on the way that eyeshadow works with different shaped eyes. And I will see you guys all in my next one.